high-speed rail travel, pioneered in Japan, would quickly spread across Asia and into Europe, revolutionising travel by train and offering unmatched convenience for passengers. But a small alteration meant to improve passenger comfort would prove to harbour a deadly design flaw. The 3rd of June 1998, Germany, Munich. ICE 884 is travelling to Hamburg from Munich on a route that will take the train through Eschede in Lower Saxony. The train is an ICE 1, ICE standing for Intercity Express. Introduced 10 years earlier, ICE is Germany's high speed train service operated by Deutsche Bahn, the German national railway company, connecting major cities in Germany and neighbouring countries. High speed rail travel originated in Japan with their Shinkansen, meaning bullet train in English. They are known as high speed rail outside of Japan, but the term bullet train is also sometimes used interchangeably. Bullet trains run significantly faster than traditional rail, using an integrated system of specialised vehicles and dedicated tracks. Germany's ICE trains are capable of reaching speeds up to 186 mph, over twice as fast as traditional rail cars. Early adapters of high-speed rail in Europe are France, Italy, Spain and of course Germany. Intercity Express has run safely for all this time so far, but one modification to the design was made to mitigate vibrations, which would spoil the otherwise smooth ride. Originally, ICE trains were designed with what are known as monoblock wheels. As you'd guess from the name, they are made of a single piece, but when these wheels wear, they can do so unevenly, causing vibrations which travel to the cabin. The problem was bad enough to even cause eating utensils to move around tables and fall onto the floor. To counter this, Deutsche Bahn decides to swap out ICE's monoblock wheels for a different type, known as the wheel tyre design. This replacement works similarly to the wheel rim on a car, featuring a central hub with a metal tyre wrapped around it. In between the hub and tyre is a rubber insert to absorb the vibrations. This wheel design was more commonly associated with trams, and worked for them with great success. Deutsche Bahn expects to reap the same benefits for their high-speed trains. 40 minutes from Hamburg, Intercity Express 884 is passing through a shedder when unexpectedly, in Coach 1, a long piece of jagged metal is catapulted upwards, piercing the floor of the carriage like a lance, and comes to rest between two seats where a family are seated. The father rushes to inform a conductor, located in the third coach, but before pulling the emergency stop, company policy says he has to evaluate any damage himself before doing so. The men return to coach one, taking approximately one minute. In this time, the whole train begins to sway side to side. Another object shoots up, penetrating the floor and reaching the ceiling. Just before 11am local time, one of the cars leaves the tracks and ICE 884 derails, slamming into an overpass causing it to collapse. The front power car and carriages 1 and 2 escape the bridge collapse, but carriage 3 and a number of others behind are crushed, and the rest behind those jackknife coming to a halt in a zigzag pattern, with finally the rear power car resting off the track. The accident is the deadliest high-speed rail crash so far as of 1998, with 101 lives lost out of 295 on board. At the time of impact, it was travelling at 124 miles per hour. After the rescue is completed, an investigation is launched to find the cause. Intercity Express has operated safely for years, but is there an unknown fault that could happen again? In the wreckage, the remains of a car is discovered, leaving the public and media to speculate. Could this car have been on the tracks when it shouldn't have been? One of the greatest dangers to trains are stuck vehicles causing an obstruction. It is found, however, that this was in fact not an unlucky motorist who'd gotten stuck crossing the railway, but was actually a maintenance vehicle parked on top of the bridge above and fell down when the bridge collapsed. When the wreckage is fully examined, 
they discover the object that first penetrated the cabin was one of the metal tyres from a wheel of the same carriage, which, due to fatigue, had snapped, unravelled from its wheel, and been sent flying up into the passenger car. This tyre, while simultaneously hanging from the hole in the bottom of the floor, had then caught on a guide rail, scooping it up and also embedding it into the cabin. This guide rail then caught on the ground, lifting the bogey off the track. One of the now derailed wheels struck the lever switch, changing the track, causing the rear axle of car 3 to go onto the parallel track, throwing it sideways into a support column of the overpass, causing the collapse onto the train. The reason for the failure of the tyre was due to metal fatigue, which, down to a design flaw, had failed long before expected. In fact, Ustra, the tram company who used the wheel design Deutsche Bahn based theirs off of, actually discovered this issue with their fleet and issued a warning, but Deutsche Bahn didn't act on it. When using fatigue detection equipment to look for cracks in their train tyres, Deutsche Bahn encountered a lot of nuisance warnings and stopped doing the tests. As bad as the accident was, it could have been even worse, as another train, ICE 787, was meant to be just behind 884, but due to both trains being off schedule by a minute each, 787 was, as luck would have it, ahead of 884. If both trains were on schedule, 787 would have likely smashed into the back of the wreckage of 884, causing further devastation. After the accident, Deutsche Bahn paid 30,000 marks for each victim's families, and in August 2002, two Deutsche Bahn officials and one engineer were charged with manslaughter. The case ended in a plea bargain in April 2003, each were made to pay 10,000 euros. Within weeks of the disaster, all wheels of the same design on Intercity Express trains were replaced once again with monoblock wheels, and the layout of switches on the entire network was checked and revised. Rescue workers at the accident reported difficulties in cutting through the train carriages and breaking windows to reach passengers. This extra rigidity was to help cope with the increased speed of high-speed travel. All trains were refitted with windows that have clear braking seams. A memorial was constructed and opened in 2001, consisting of 101 planted cherry trees, one for each passenger who lost their life, as well as a stone memorial with the victims' names carved into it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like for the time and effort I put into making it, and subscribe if you don't want to miss future uploads from me, and I'll see you in the next episode.